We are doing this. Salutations, friends. Salutations. Salutations, friends. Salutations. My name is Brianna Bond, otherwise known as No Ordinary Scholar. I thought it was about time that I preach my piece. Spoiler alert, it's about time. I'm not a betting girl. That sounds amazing. I'm listening. Are you ready? Salutations, friends. My name is Brianna Bond, otherwise known as No Ordinary Scholar, and if this setup looks hopefully better to you than you probably guessed, I was finally able to do computer things. Like, we are not recording off of my phone this time around, so update, update. Uh, apparently, like, there, I, there's no one in Hawaii that could fix my computer. Best Buy was not allowed to do it because MSI has a contract that won't let them fix a computer if it's no longer under warranty, so F them or whatnot. Ugh. But, 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 I was able to get a new computer. It's not the best computer. I don't, it's like, it's decently fine. It runs pretty well. It just, for some reason, it doesn't have a bright screen or keyboard, and that just bothers my eyes so much. But we'll, we're fine. We're dealing with it. It's able to record. It's going to be able to edit. That's, that's what we need right now. That's what we need. And so... Yeah, we got there. We're doing it, friends. I'm excited for this next chapter. So let's get on into it and start actually with a letter that I wrote a while ago to my senator. So, Senator Kamala Harris, a former presidential candidate, has proposed this bill that is aiming to extend school days for three hours. I've had a lot of trouble finding primary source information about this. Like if I I can't find like an actual copy of the bill anywhere, anything I've seen, I haven't been able to find a direct proposal of it and her own explanation of it. As whereas I have been able to find like several news outlets and such that have reported information about it. So I am basically talking here about what I know about this bill, which is going to be that it is directed at elementary schoolers, so some people do think that it extends out to high school. As far as I know, it's supposed to specifically be for elementary school, and that it would also then leave these kids having a 10-hour school day. So whether it is directed just at like elementary school or if it is supposed to extend out to high schoolers, I vehemently, vehemently oppose it for, uh, for many reasons, the first two of which I can go over very quickly. The first issue I have with this is that in the bill, it is not going to force teachers to stay late, but if they choose to, they would be paid their normal rate. Now this issue might actually be just a result of the fact that I don't have access to the actual bill, so this is the information as it's been presented through like secondary sources. But if this is how it stands, if that language is what is used in the bill, I, I like very much request that you act towards trying to get that changed and be more clear because I would worry that that language as it is presented there could very easily be used to turn to, for people to try and get away with not giving teachers overtime because there are obviously going to be some teachers who are like, I can't leave these kids here with nothing to do for three hours. There are going to be teachers who are going to insist on staying for the sake of the children. They're already not paid enough. If they are going to be staying this, these number of hours and if they are going to reach what I think usually state laws or maybe even federal laws usually require after 40 hours, it's overtime pay. If they are going to be hitting those extra hours, they deserve to get that pay. They deserve more, but we're starting with this. My next issue is one that I feel like is easy to bypass if you have not been in the school system recently. If you haven't been in school during all of this ridiculous standardized testing, we can I can get into a full big, I've actually gone into, if you guys haven't seen that video, I can click it, I, I think it's gonna be in that corner, it should be in that corner, but I can link it there. So in the bill that's being proposed, the money, they're, they're giving out money to the schools to help support this extra time that they're going to open, and they are suggesting that it be used for extracurricular activities, music, art, dance, 
choir, that's also music, but that's fine. Because studies have shown that extracurricular activities help immensely in a child's development. And the way schools are funded and the way that school, the requirements that are being held of schools, it's hard for schools to be able to afford extracurricular activities. So they're suggesting, hey, we'll give you this money to support these programs, but you should use this extra three hours as extracurricular time for the kids so they can get those other skills, develop those other creative skills. But as someone who went through school during all of the standardized testing, I recognize and I think it's important to note that this is only a suggestion. At the end of the day, they, they're leaving it up to the discretion of school administrators. These school administrators are very well aware of the fact that they are given so many tests and not nearly enough time to actually go over the material being tested. The school administrators know that because they have to live that. I guarantee you that as long as this stays where the extracurricular idea is just a suggestion, then there are going to be administrators who are going to take this time and enforce more instructional time so they can try and get ahead on those standardized tests bump up their scores a little bit and then once one does it the next is going to do it so they don't fall behind and it's really just going to be a point where you are putting these I mean it's gonna be like five to eleven year olds through ten hours of instruction they are not gonna be able to handle that it's a lot it's a lot to be forced on such young kids now I actually do want to get into discussing the bill and its inspiration because I find there are some actual issues with this because when you see the bill is supposed to help relieve the stress and the financial tension on lower income families that just can't afford daycare or babysitters stuff like that and you see a lot of senators when they are talking about their support for this bill they are discussing it as if talking about their own experiences, having parents that struggled, worked multiple jobs, and were just struggling with money and trying to raise the kids, and they want to relieve that in other parents. My issue is including with the senators that have personal experience is how we are in a situation, how are we are in a mindset where we see parents that are struggling through like two jobs each, can't afford to take care of their child. And the thing we need to focus on is the child and what what to do with the child, where to throw the child, as opposed to making sure that our economic system is functioning well enough to where you don't have to work four jobs in your household in order to have children. I think that that's the thing that really bothers me about this bill is the fact that like we're okay with parents working themselves to death. We're okay with parents never being around their children, never raising their children. But we need somewhere for the kid to go with while they're working, right? I really believe the focus needs to be changed on, needs to be turned and needs to be focused on how do we actually help these parents not struggle? Because I personally, I know if I could afford it, I would have a child by now, but I know that like both myself and my partner, we make bread. I know Honolulu's expensive, but at the same time, pay is raised here. Pay is raised out here to try and match that. It doesn't. If we were to move somewhere else, I doubt we would be able to get paid the same amount. Really, like unless YouTube and the books and everything else takes off, there's a solid chance I may never actually be able to afford to have children. And that is so aggravating. I work so much. He works so much. <laughs> it makes me sad. It's that's it's I think it's ridiculous that we're just here to we're just accepting the idea that you know people can't afford to take care of their kids nowadays. So we need to figure the government needs to figure out how to take care of the kids for them. No. We need to figure out a way for people to afford to have a family. That's the part of the American dream, right? Is having your like four person family, your white picket fence in your house. That's not feasible at 
all today. We literally could, can't even get around to the point where you can have children without going into incredible debt. But the issue you're having is like, babysitters are so fucking expensive. And I agree with, her name's Trish Zornina. Zornina. I'm saying the name wrong and I don't think I'm gonna get it right. Trish Zornina, sure. When she said that adults should scale back the full-time work week and reduce commute times by enhancing remote work days. We need to figure something out on the end of the adults so that way they are able to stay home and take care of their kids. Maybe that would help with, there's so many things that would help and that would benefit by being able to actually stay home and take care of your children that would go on and improve for the neck for them as they go through adulthood and then if they are able to continue on in those patterns of being able to actually take care of their children that would help then for the next couple generations why does there need to be an argument about whether or not it is radical to say that the american dream is too expensive these days and that um, most americans can work they can go to college they can get high degrees there are people with doctors that have to get minimum wage jobs that level of education getting a minimum wage job in hawaii we have one of the highest minimum wages and it is i think nine dollars and 75 cents an hour and that is not going to be able to pay that out here that is not paying your rent 975 is not paying your bills in hawaii unless this is some government plan for mass population control which i would say is racist because of the way this would be this would be rolled out because of the way this would be actually implemented demographically that would be racist so stop that but unless this is some form of population control there should be no reason why we are turning such a blind eye to this and finally let's talk about the issue i have with this that it's really close to home and that requires a look at the language with this law we are extending the school day so that is not meaning we are keeping the school day open we are extending the amount of time that by law a child needs to be in school and i think this is coming from a very misguided presumption of safety within a school while i'm talking Keep in mind everything we know about the psychology of mass shooters, specifically school shooters. So for me, and I know several others, like not several, many, I know, and I know for many others as well, life didn't progress as like a TV show or a movie would have, would have said it did. Like everything that happened in Mean Girls, that kind of attitude, behavior, hostility, that stuff, happened in elementary school for me. The first time I was ever called a nigger was in fourth grade. First time I was ever physically beat up by bullies was in elementary school as a whole. And the first time I ever attempted suicide would have been, I think, third grade. When I did attempt suicide in high school before my junior, not before my junior, before my senior year of high school, I was hospitalized, I was put in a, a psych ward for like a week and in that ward I was also housed with a bunch of like five and six year olds that said they had also tried to kill themselves. So I know I'm not alone in this. And I want you, I wanted you to keep this in mind it's because even if this is just elementary schoolers, especially if this is high schoolers as well, not everyone is safe in school. I think it is important that we allow them to have the opportunity to go somewhere and choose where to be so they can feel safe. Most schools enlist a school year of about 180 days. So that would mean that is 540 extra hours to be in this place where you may be getting abused. Your teachers might not care. I know mine did in elementary school, middle school, or high school, really. And that is just a lot of time to be forced to be somewhere where you are being attacked and abused, especially, let's, we're not even going to get into the idea of 
maybe you are holding a kid here for those extra three hours exclusively to hand them off to an abusive parent so they have no break in between. I think it's important that we allow a kid to try and find that safe space until we can get become a society that can better take care of each other the way that needs to happen to avoid issues like suicide or mass shooting because really really as myself i've seen myself versus someone very violent and aggressive towards others and we went through a lot of the same things the difference is who we blamed i blamed myself i attempted suicide he blamed others he is very violent and aggressive so i think it is important that we allow a child to be able to find a safe space in the event that we don't know the ones we give are not safe. Because again, this could very easily lead, five, that's 540 hours. That could very easily lead to increased suicide rates, increased mass shootings, increased just damage to children. And I think we really need to take care of that and look after that more than we have been doing. This bill seems to very much, even if we don't include the very real and very likely, the very real issue of the mental health damages that are going to happen to child, I don't think it stops to wonder what is going to happen to a, to a five-year-old for being held in school for 10 hours. I don't think this is, I don't think this is written by someone who has worked with children in that kind of atmosphere that in that kind of like educational or psychological atmosphere i don't think this is made by someone who actually understands or really is thinking about the child themselves and i know there was also some people saying like hey i would be nowhere without extracurriculars i like could have been on the street without extracurriculars to do something throughout the day, then we should work towards, if that is really where we are so dedicated towards focusing for this issue, then we need to work towards making extracurriculars available to students, making sure there is a variety because there are a variety of different people in this world with different interests and different desires. So we need to make sure that we have enough extracurriculars to tend to all of these different people and that's where the money should be going and it should be directly exclusively for extracurriculars and giving children the option as opposed to forcing people to do something we can't guarantee is going towards extracurriculars i guarantee that at least a handful of schools to start are not going to use that for extracurriculars and force them into a place where they may not be safe i'm not saying they may not feel safe because the fact of the matter is, I was actually choked out in elementary school. I was not safe, not a damn teacher cared. It happens, it's not always a good place for them to be. But no, again, I'm sure as most people know, a lot of kids when they are in those kind of situations are not going to go to their parents about it. So I, I appreciate and I understand where they are coming from with this bill. I just think that as it stands, this would cause way more harm and ignore much bigger problems than anything else. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been it's been good. I like I like this video. I did send I did I went off on a couple rants for this, but I did send a letter typed up of this over to my senator. Hopefully by the time this video comes out, they've made a decision that I think would be beneficial and prudent for us to think about when doing these types of things, but it will probably take forever because, you know, it's gotta go through the Senate, then it's gotta go through the House. It's, it's a whole thing. It is a whole thing. We'll see what happens. If you want to hear more from me, check out my Instagram as well as hang out with me over on Patreon.com over there it's like you can support me for as little as two dollars a month and we we do some cool things you guys get early access to all of my youtube videos and my vlogs as well you get which is going to be super important now you get early access to and early access to the first chapter of my book 
So whenever I get ready and I've like decided on a final copy of this book, you guys get the first chapter of it and I hope you like it. I've worked really hard on this book series that's about to come out. It's going to be titled the Queen of Thieves series. I'm super excited for it. It's been great. I am currently writing book six. I, it's, it's a lot of work though. I'm tired. I'm very tired. So if you want to, you can go over there. $2 a month. Help me out. Help your girl out because then maybe I won't have to do all of this alone. But until next time, Valedictions Friends.